invite everybody to stand and sing our opening carol, number 119, Angels from the Realms of Glory. remain standing as the choir prepares us for the prayer reading and while the prayer reading occurs also remain standing and after the choir has closed that with the amen I invite you to sit at that time Jesus, you came to this earth as the babe in Bethlehem, but you were still the King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you today as our great God, the one who made the earth, the one who made each one of us, the one who has invited us to be in your presence here. We honor you and we ask that you would accept our praise and our, our honor back to you so that you would know that we are in love with the one, the one who came down to bring love to this world. May we be your children today, we pray. Amen. Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to Amen. 
we give this child to you, our precious gift of love. Help us to lead each step aright with guidance from above. Oh, bless each child of yours and grant when they are grown. They will have learned to love your way and choose it for their own. We give ourselves to you and may your spirit fill our hearts and home that all we do be subject to your will. Remain seated as we sing all verses of the first Noel found on 118 in your hymnal.
now time in this service for a family to come forward and represent this wonderful season where we have the opportunity of being with Trevor and Kiri and Jace. And they have a little sister. Kalia. Come, Mom. Come, Debbie. Come on up. Jace, what? you are not the little boy anymore. <laughs> you know that, right? Right? You are now the big brother. Are you okay with that? Yeah? Okay. Has mommy shown you how to change diapers yet? <laughs> no, no, not yet? Oh my goodness. I had the privilege of having my younger brother with me recently and I was reminded how many diapers he and I were taught to change. Because we had two younger brothers and sis no sisters, sorry, no sisters, younger brothers who, who were given to us to take care of. So Jace, thank you so much for being willing to be a big brother. Is that okay? Thank you. I want you to know this family looks so good, I'm going to stand close to them because I look better when I'm standing by them. <laughs> Isn't this great? Mom, yeah, take some pictures. This is awesome. This is the Styles family, and they have listened to one of God's commands. Do you know that there are two commands that God has given all of humanity? And if you're hearing my voice as a human today, that means you. The first was, be fruitful and multiply. So they did. So they have. And this beautiful young lady is known as Kalia. Kalia, yes. Do you know your name already? I bet you do. I bet your dad sang it to you while you were still in your mom's tummy. Kalia sounds to me, I don't know if this is why you chose it, but it sounds to me like the word kaleo, which is Greek for called. Called. And in fact, it's part of the name that we have for ourselves as the church, the ekkaleo people, the called out ones. And so here you have used a beautiful name that has this, this call sound in it. And you have obeyed the command of God and together the creator God has made another human. You see, mom, dad, baby makes Three. Is there another three you're thinking of? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right. So as people, humans created in the image of God, we get the opportunity to continue the creative process with the help of our Creator God. And it is, it is a wonder, it is a joy to participate in that process. And I am so glad today, I'm going to give this to mom since Jace is going to go sit by grandma there and, and, and he's, he's a happy, happy child. We have watched Jace grow and I want you to know he, he's one of my favorite, okay? Because Jace has this idea about life that it should just be amazing and that it should just be fun and I want you to know that that comes from you guys. And... Uh, the attitude that Jace has in his life comes from you, and I know, I know that Kalia is also going to be one of those individuals who maybe, I don't know, more like mom? I don't know. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think Jace is like dad? Kalia could be like mom? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, 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 don't blame you? <laughs> oh, listen to this. Listen to this. I think he's taking full credit for Kalia. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for bringing your child like Mary and Joseph brought Jesus. Uh, they brought him to give him back. You are giving Kalia back, and that is why we have these moments of dedication, because God has given her to you 
on loan to raise, to know him, to understand him, and he is the one who is hoping someday very soon to see her face to face and to have her see him face to face. Jace, see that, see that man back there? He's watching you. You watch him for me, would you please? Okay, yeah, he's sitting right there. See, he's smiling. So you watch him. See, if he stops smiling, you just tell me, and then I'll go and talk to him. God is in the midst of us, and it is at moments like this when we sing the word Emmanuel, God with us, and then we see a child is born. We know that God is with us. He's with this family, and he is asking us as a congregation to assist them, all in favor of assisting them as they raise this child in the fear of God. Would you just raise your hand just a little bit? Okay, good. See, there's enough. There's enough aunties and uncles out there, yes, in this congregation. So I want to pray a special blessing on this family, and, and I want to include you all in this uh, because it is on behalf of this congregation that we pray for you at this time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hold hands with Kalia. Can I do that right behind mom right here? Okay, Jace, can I hold this hand here? All right. Dear Jesus, you came as the son of God at just the right time in, in, in the place that you, you planned in the house of bread. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for underpinning our lives. And Lord, here it is that you have provided life for a new human, a daughter of yours. We just ask that Kalia would be blessed, that she would be a blessing, and that this family and the, in the midst of this congregation would be supported, and that Kalia would know that there is a God in heaven who wants someday to see her face to face and to have her live with him forever and ever. May this be our experience, we pray today, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 She hung on. What a grip. What a grip. Oh, sweetie. God bless you guys. And just know that as a church family, we are so excited for you. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Jace. All right, a hug, a hug. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Jace. All right. I now invite the children. Chase, you can actually stay up here for a moment. Chase, Chase. Chase, you can stay up here for a moment and set an excellent example. I want all of your peers to come up and collect the offering for, for your peers are your same age group. They're not those things in the water you see at Santa Monica, okay? So uh, come on up, kids, get your baskets, and the rest of us are going to help them by singing, not only contributing to that cause, which is Christian education, but by singing all the verses to hymn number 130, it came upon the midnight clear.
And now you may stand as you turn to Carol found on 127, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Turn to Carol 133. Thank you. 
I'd like to invite the friends of the Larios family and all the kids, if they want to come and sit up front, they can. Yeah. Tom, bring the herd on up, okay? Come on and sit up front and see what's about to happen. Did you see Kalia earlier? Did you see that we were ready to give Kalia back to Jesus when she is young? Okay, if you want to be up here, yeah, you can sit, you can sit. When you get a little older and you can, you can tell me why you love Jesus and what you believe that he has done for you, then I will be very happy to baptize you. That's why we didn't baptize Kalia today. Do you think Kalia can even talk, Jace? Can Kalia talk? Can she say even mama? Has she said mama yet? See, Kalia can't even talk yet. So we give her to Jesus today, and we say thank you, Jesus, for making Kalia. But when you get a little older, and you can say, Pastor, you know what? I really love Jesus, and I want to live with him forever and ever, then I will say, well, why don't we talk to your mom and dad about getting baptized? Is that a deal? But I want you to tell me when the water moves. Okay, Jace? So be listening. Be listening, because the water's going to move in a moment. I'm going to invite Elmer and Lisa to come down. You've seen them. It, come on. Uh, they have been coming to our church faithfully now for a number of months, even a year or so, and I am just so, so pleased because uh, this is a family that uh, represents what has happened in many Adventist lives in the sense that one gets raised, one decides to do one's own thing, and then marriages happen, and love happens, and God gets involved, and then children come along, and mom and dad want to be on the same page. You know what I'm saying? They want, to, they want to say the same thing. And I'm telling you, that's a really, really good idea. To say the same thing to your kids about what you believe in Jesus. And so Lisa is saying, I am a Christian. I have progressed. And I would like to be baptized. Elmer is saying, I've been baptized I'd like to be baptized again with my wife. Yeah. We can be together on the same page for our kids and forever and ever with Jesus. So I said, sure, why not? And so we have the opportunity at this Christmas season to see a rebirth happen. I don't know about you, but the, the wonderful analogy is there. And we are so grateful that at this time, we have this opportunity. So Lisa promised that she would be willing to go first. <laughs> so I'm going to ask her to step over here. Lisa, because you have decided that Jesus is your destiny and that because of him you have eternal life and that you are wanting to be with him not only now but also in eternity with your family, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that there is this thing about being the man of the house. And there is this thing about Jesus being our leader. And I want you to know that this man right here has Jesus as his leader. And he wants Jesus to be the leader of his house, and so he is following Jesus and leading his family to the foot of the cross. And as such, I am happy, I am happy to recognize the decision that Elmer has made to be baptized with his wife. So Elmer, 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I now baptize you into Jesus and eternity. Amen. Let's pray together with them, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you that on this day, heaven rejoices as they always do with us. The angels are singing, and we have had the opportunity to sing these praises to you, God, and please accept the love that we have in our hearts for Lisa and Elmer. Know that it is there because of you, and that always and forever, you will be our God. Amen. Amen. As heaven rejoices, so do we. I invite you to stand and sing Carol Found on 136. Good Christians, now rejoice. Have you been harking? I met an angel just now. His name is Harold. And I want to welcome him. Sing, turn to 122. And we'll sing all of those verses as well.
sure they're aware of that. One through six, and First Corinthians twelve thirteen through fifteen. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judah, and saying, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near." This is who this is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all, Ju and all Judah and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. The next carol, While Shepherds Watch Their Flock, number 139, allows you an advantage to sit in your pew and behold God's glory from the things that God has done for you, right up including this present moment. There's a phrase that we are all very familiar with, 
and at this time of the year it is good to re-familiarize ourselves with it. God is love. We say it, we often mean it, but it is at this time of the year, I believe, when we can once again become in awe of the fact that we do not understand it. We are human. We are created. He is the creator. He is the one who formed us and who gave us to each other. He is Lord of all. So when it just rolls off your tongue this season that God is love, understand the pronouncement that you're making in those three very, very tiny words. You are saying that the God of heaven in our consciousness we have encapsulated in a tiny four-letter word, love. And for whatever you put together in that word, you are saying that is what you know and understand God to be. I would, I would ask you this Christmas... To think about expanding that word in your mind. Yes, I know the guy. I know the guy who has a cabin on Hayden Lake in Idaho. He flies an old plane that has floats on it so that he can land at his cabin and you think oh he's just another one of those rich people that have a cool cabin and a cool plane to fly around in he's probably smart because he can fly a plane I know a guy I know the guy whose job it was to put glasses on Hubble Yep, we sent a rocket into space with a telescope that needed glasses. The images that came back were extremely disappointing. And it was realized that a fix was necessary in order for us to get the full effect of what we had done as a country and as a human race to look at the vastness of space. And this guy, very unassuming, with a cabin up on Hayden Lake and a plane to fly there, led a team to develop the lenses and the mechanisms that were going to be necessary in order for Hubble to be able to see properly. And then, oh my goodness, when all of that was done and Hubble was able to see and started sending back the images that it was able to see, we realized once again just how small we are. At some of the uh, astrological places that you can visit, including right here in Los Angeles, you are always hit by the fact that this is one tiny blue dot. I don't care what you believe, if you go up into space and you look back at Earth from outer space and you realize just how small it is in the vastness of the galaxies and the universe, you realize this is an amazing thing that God did when he said that planet has a people, has a a race upon it who has chosen to rebel against me and I am going to save them. So be careful this season when you say to someone, oh, 
God is love. Because just like the, the micro that, that can contain the macro and the macro that can contain the micro to the, to the extent that our minds just want to explode, this is the God who came and who dwelt in physical presence incarnate. God with us. So I want to say, maybe we'll twist it back around a little bit today and we'll say love is God. I would invite you to think that thought and let it just percolate and let it just maybe twist some of your views just a little bit because the fact is that when somebody does something good, we have to admit that there is only one source of that good if we believe that God is love. And that even if someone doesn't believe in the God that we believe in, when they do something that is from him to another human being or another creature on earth, they are doing it because of him and not themselves. We can recognize that. We can thank people. We can, we can say, you know, when you do that, you remind me of my heavenly father. It will probably surprise some of your friends to say that. They don't believe in that heavenly father. But if you see your heavenly father's actions in them and you give them credit for being in correlation with him, they may just come to believe in him. I have three words that have helped me in my life and I hope they help you because it helps me to understand maybe how God feels at Christmas. One is appointment. The Creator God created us as humans, gave us parents, and put us in a garden called Eden. At that moment, He had provided everything that the human race would ever need. But there came a day when there was a choice that was offered And our human parents did not choose God. And as a result, he had to remove them from being where they could eat from the tree of life so that what they had done would not be eternalized. No, the theology in Star Wars isn't correct. There is an end coming an end for evil. And they were cast out of the garden and they were given the realization that an end was coming for them, that life would not go on forever and ever. But they were told that there would be another appointment. So you, you see you have these three words. You have appointment and you have disappointment. Imagine the disappointment that Adam and Eve felt when their garments of light turned off and they knew that they were naked. God provided once again garments of skin. I don't know. I don't suspect that he had to kill anything. He provided them with garments of skin to cover them for the long term. Huge disappointment. But thank God today, disappointment is, is followed by the third word, which is reappointment. So you have appointment and you have disappointment. And then because Jesus came all those thousands of years ago, we have reappointment. Mary was the one who was chosen. To be like Eve, who thought that her firstborn son 
would be the one. The one she had been told would come and, and would take their place and would, would pay the price for their disappointing of God. So Mary, Mary is the one who bears the one. God is love. Jesus is that love in flesh. A good friend of mine, a uh, former president that I worked with, told me, we are called, so if you like, this is the call right now. We are called to continue the incarnation. Jesus comes, he puts on flesh, he, as one writer of the Bible says, put on flesh and moved into our neighborhood. So you could consider yourselves as a continuation of that, if you like, where because you are inhabited by the Spirit of God, Jesus himself lives in your heart, you can continue the incarnation, the flesh that you have, the spirit that you have in you. You get to go on his errands like a good pathfinder. God is love. He loves all his children and he wants all his children back. There are some, my friends, maybe even in the hearing of my voice, maybe even me who even when they hear their father's voice calling them, say, no, I can do it my way. I don't want to go your way, God. Even then, even then, he still sends his Holy Spirit. He still sends Jesus to talk to us and say, look, go with me. Go with me on this. Go with me on this, and when it is all said and done, we will be living face to face with each other in my Father's house. John 14 tells us Jesus' words. If I make it through, you will make it through too. Don't think that Jesus didn't have to have faith, just like he is asking us to have faith. He had to have faith that what he was doing was correct. In fact, I believe to this day that that is what the devil was torturing Jesus with when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is why he sweat drops of blood. It is why angels had to come and minister to him. He was being tortured by the devil who was saying, you have failed. Look at your friend. Can you imagine? If the evil one is pointing at you or me. Oh, look at your friends. They don't get it. They heard what you said, but they didn't really hear what you said. They heard what they wanted to hear. You failed, Jesus. He had to have faith that what he had done was going to be accepted. Remember when, when Mary, after he's raised, Mary wants to grab a hold of him and, and just continue where she left off in their relationship. And he says, wait, I've got to go to my father first because I need to know that it was enough that I made it. Because you see, in John 14, he promised us, if I make it through, if what I do is enough, you will make it through too. Isn't that not amazing? And I'm telling you, this is all what is encapsulated in those three little words. God is love. Love is God. God came down and lived in our neighborhood with us, and he is inviting you and I to continue that incarnational experience. 
in a little while, we'll have an opportunity to make a commitment. Maybe a re-commitment. I hope at this time in this year, before we roll headlong into 2020, which by all accounts looks like it's going to be a very interesting year, before we roll into that year, I am asking that you would consider recommitting your life to the God of the universe. I'm going to ask the Larios family to come up because they just got baptized, right? Yeah? Yeah? What do you think of your mom and pa, huh? Yeah? Pretty cool? You think you want to do that sometime? Yeah. All right. We'll make a date. In this denomination known as the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we, we ask people whether they have been baptized by immersion, whether they have, have gone through this wedding-type experience and they have uh, left back uh, of, of the previous life all of the things that they were before and, and they're willing to grasp a hold of the hand of Jesus and say, wherever he leads me, that's where I want to go. We ask people that. Have, have you been baptized? And people say, oh yeah, I was baptized. Well, was it by immersion? And, and why do we do that? Well, we do it because you can't breathe underwater. You're going to die. So it's kind of like a grave. You leave back the other life and you are raised to a new chapter, a new life. That's why we do the whole immersion thing. Otherwise, you know, sprinkling might be good enough. But we want to say, no, we've, we've left off being, being part of another kingdom. Now we have a new identity. Now we have a new, uh, a new thing going on with the God of the universe. We believe God is love. So based on the fact that this family has chosen Jesus, and they have also, secondarily, second choice, second part of the same choice, asked to be members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is a worldwide fellowship of local churches just like this one. I'm going to ask if there's somebody who's a member of this church, if they would say, I move. So moved. All in favor. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? See me after. No. <laughs> See? It's moments, it's moments like this of family, of congregational life, of rebirth, of reappointment that we know that the entire universe, the, the angels are singing huge anthems right now. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing some more because I think we need to join the angels, don't you? Amen. Father in heaven, I, I thank you that that on heaven, in heaven and on earth right now there is joy because there are those who have staked their reputation, staked their lives on you, Jesus, on the promise that you made that if you make it through, that we will too. God in heaven, lead the Larios family into your presence physically and visibly very soon. And Lord, you know we all want to be there with them. So we recommit our lives to you today, and we pray this in the blessed and powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. In this season, particularly with an emphasis on giving, I want to ask a question. What has God given you? What has God given you this morning? Yesterday, last week, last month, preceding year, your entire life? To me, the answer is just one word. And so, this, and this word, I'll bet it's the same one that's in your head right now. 
starts with E and ends with T-H-I-N-G. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? What has God given us? Everything. Everything we need. Now, what is our privilege in these moments? And that is to respond. This tree, which actually is a symbol of Christ, as he died upon the wood, for you and me to give a portion of what we've been given by God and return it to God. And I hope with great joy and I hope with great thanks. So I'm going to invite you, first of all, to turn in your hymnals because it's not printed in the bulletin. But if you would like to be part of the faithful that follow God, part of the ones making that commitment of faith, I invite you right now to turn to number 132 and bring those offering bags, hang, hang them on the tree, and the tie envelopes will fit inside of those. And you may also bring the baskets that Mike is going to show a few of right now, and they can put them in. Are the kids still with us and willing to assist? Sure. That's an, also another opportunity because we understand some of those uh, bags were not done. If you want to come up and help again, we thank you for that as well. Come on. Yeah, you can help. There you go. Come on. All right, Zach. Thank you. Okay, guys, if you would just hold this. Come on, Zach. You guys can stand up here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So those who have envelopes, if you're going to do a, a check, just put it in a tithe envelope first and then put it into one of those little squares uh, so that we can uh, deal with the check appropriately. So we need one of those tithe envelopes. Thank you.
you come to the middle of the aisle and take the hand of the person standing next to you as we sing our final carol, Joy to the World. Thank you. 